Hi, this is Mrs. Rodriguez with another lesson video. Today's lesson video is all about determining whether or not a table is proportional or not proportional based on tables that you've created. Okay, so that's the scenario. You're now creating tables and based on your tables, you're going to determine is the table proportional or not proportional. Also, we're gonna be looking at tables that have missing numbers and how we go about figuring out what those missing numbers are if the table is proportional. So before we begin, let's review what it takes for a table to be proportional. So a table has a proportional relationship between X and Y if there is a unit rate. And remember, it has to work for all the X's and Y's. And we can find that unit rate K by dividing Y by X. The other thing that we want to remember is that a table must have an origin of 0, 0. If X is 0, then Y is 0, and if Y is 0, X is 0. All right, so let's take a look on how to find the missing values of a proportional table. So the steps are, first step is you're going to calculate the unit rate, and we do this, remember unit rate, we use K, and we do this by dividing our y with x. So once we have the unit rate, we're gonna take that information and we're gonna apply it to figure out what the missing numbers are. So let's look at our first example. Our first example, we have a table. We have our x's in the first row, the y in the second row. Now, we said that the unit rate equals y over x. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my table and I'm gonna see where do I have a point that has an x and a y. And as you can see, the first two boxes, we have an x and y that go together. So those are the numbers I'm gonna use. y is 36, x is nine. So 36 divided by nine equals Four. That means that our unit rate is four. Nine times four gives you 36. And because this table is proportional and this is the unit rate, that means that it has to work for all the x's. So that means all the x's were multiplied by four to get y. So knowing this, we can look at our table and we can go, okay, well then if five is x, my y has to be 5 times 4, which is 20. And if y is 16, then 16 divided by 4, we're just going backwards, and dividing would be 4. And if y is 8, going backwards, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Or you can think of it as what number times 4 gives you 8? Two. What number times four gives you 16? Four. Either way works. Okay. So let's take a look at another example. Here we have X and Y again in two different rows, and we have new numbers we're working with. Notice these two boxes have an X and Y we can work with. So k is our unit rate, we know it's y divided by x. In this case, y is two, x is six. Now, we can simplify two over six and make it one third. Six doesn't go into two, it's too big, but we can simplify this fraction to one third. And that means that our unit rate is supposed to be one third. Six times one third gives you two. And if it's the unit rate, then that means it has to work for all the x's and y's. Knowing this, we can go ahead and figure out what the missing numbers are. So let's take a look at the 15. 15 times 1 third gives us y. Okay, so 15 times 1 third. Now if you need review on how to multiply um, fractions, go ahead and look at that lesson video. But to make a whole number into a fraction, all we have to do is stick a one under it. And then once we do that, to multiply fractions, you just multiply across, okay? And we end up with 15 times one, which is 15. One times three, which is three. 15 divided by three is five, and we get five for y. 
Now I'm gonna do the same thing if it's nine, if x is nine. So I'm gonna have nine over one times one third. Nine times one is nine. One times three is three. Remember, I'm just multiplying it straight across. Nine divided by three is three. Essentially what you're doing is whatever x is, you end up just dividing it by three to get y. That's all we're really doing. Um, okay, so now if we know that y is four, that means some mystery number times one third gives us four. Or we can go in reverse and say, okay, four over one divided by one third. Now, once again, if you need a reminder on how to divide fractions, go ahead and watch that lesson video. But essentially, you keep the first fraction, you change division to multiplication, and you do the reciprocal of the second fraction, so you flip it. It's that keep it, change it, flip it. Then it's a multiplication problem, so we just multiply across. Four times three is 12, and one times one is one. So that means we get 12. And that makes sense, right? Because if x ends up just being a number divided by three gives you y, then 12 divided by three does give you four. It works, okay? So that's how you find the missing number in proportional tables. And we can do this because they have a unit rate that works for all the x's and y's, so we can count on that unit rate to calculate the missing numbers. If it wasn't proportional, then we'd have no idea because there is no unit rate and it could go up and down different ways, right? Okay. So now we're gonna look at what happens when you create a table and then have to determine whether or not it's proportional. So here's our example. Which team will win the race? You've decided to walk in a long distance race. There are two teams you can join. You can join team A, which walks at a constant rate of 2.5 miles per hour, or you can join team B, which walks four miles the first hour and then two miles per hour after that. It wants us to create a table for each team showing the distances that it would take to walk for times of one, two, three, four, five, and six hours. All right, so before I even jump in trying to figure this out, there's a couple of things we need to determine. First of all, we have our two tables. We have time in hours and distance in miles. First, we need to figure out which is our X and which is our Y, time or distance. Now, if you'll remember in the intro to proportional relationships video, we said that X always comes first. And an easy way to remember that is that X comes before Y in the alphabet, right? So W, X, Y, and Z. So X is before Y always. So that means in this case, our first column is going to be X, our second column is going to be Y. So we can go ahead and just fill that in. The next thing we can just automatically fill in is it wants to know how far for one through six hours. So I can just automatically put in the hours for both tables. Okay, now we're gonna focus on team A. So team A, it said it, they walk at a constant rate of 2.5 miles per hour. So that means in the first hour, they walk 2.5 miles. In hour two, they've now doubled that, so it's gonna be five hours, or I'm sorry, five miles. Three hours is gonna be 7.5. Four is gonna be 10. Five hours is gonna be 12.5 and six hours is gonna be 15, okay? And we could do this because I had a constant rate, which is essentially a unit rate, right? And all we had to do was multiply each of these by 2.5. That's all we did. 
we multiplied the x's by 2.5 to get the y's. Because remember, always, always, always remember, y equals the unit rate times x. Okay. Now let's take a look at team B. So team B, the first hour, they walk four miles. Okay, so the first hour, four miles. And then two miles per hour after that. Okay, so that means in the second hour, they only walk two more miles, so that would be six. In the third hour, two more miles, so that would be eight. In the fourth hour, two more miles, 10, and then 12, and then 14. So it was one through four for four miles for the first hour, and then they just added, right, two miles thereafter. Okay. So let's take a look at our questions. First question, for which team is the distance proportional to time? All right, so for team A, for team A, we know that it had a unit rate of 2.5, and the 2.5 never changed, and it stayed the same for all the x's and y's. So yes, team A is proportional. Now for team B, let's take a look at team B. Let's see if there's a unit rate, okay? Now we know unit rate means y divided by x. So for the first one, it's gonna be four divided by one, which equals four. Okay, so that means one times four gave us four. So if this is proportional, then that means every x should be multiplied by the same thing to get y. Should be multiplied by the same number that never changes. That's what the unit rate is. So let's take a look. For two hours, it was six miles. Well, six divided by two is, uh-oh, it's three. So do we have a unit rate? No. This is, no, not proportional. There is no unit rate because each X is not multiplied by the same thing. There's no constant same number that is multiplied with all the X's. So team B, it's not a proportional relationship. So for A, which team is proportional? Team A. What is the unit rate for the proportional team? Well we discovered that it was 2.5. That's what we multiplied x by to get y. What makes the other team's distance not proportional to time? Well, there's no unit rate, right? The numbers jump around. First, it was multiplied by four, and then it was multiplied by three. It, it's changing. There's no unit rate. All right, so that's how you create a table from scratch and then fill in your table and determine whether or not your table is proportional or not proportional, okay? So if you have any questions on creating the table and determining if it's proportional or not, or if you have any questions on how to find the missing numbers in a proportional table, feel free to make an appointment with me for office hours and I'd be more than happy to help. Hope you have a great day. Bye.